Good evening, Ian. How are you? Hey, doing great. How are you? It's that time of the week again. Are you ready for this week's edition of the Ian Cast? I am absolutely. And this this week we are going to stay out of trouble with the Apple fanboys and fangirls. Somebody actually asked in the comments, "What about the fangirls?" And well, yeah. Uh, yeah, there there's definitely a lot of Apple fangirls. However, I think the stock though is mostly fan boys. Uh, probably, yeah, <laughs> probably. I think yeah, well, we, we're going to stay out of trouble with <laughs> Apple stock. We've gotten enough trouble, enough comments, enough hate. So I want to stay out of that for now, uh, for, for this week. Let's go to the market, Ian. Um, and as usual, uh, we at Bull Profits are on the other side of what everyone is thinking, feeling, and doing, um, yeah. uh, which is that the stories in the press are doom and gloom. Of course. And burn. And uh, we're seeing something different. So you go first. Yeah, so, yeah, it's no surprise this stuff, you know, the, the media is trying to put a negative spin on everything. It's just what they do. Um, but, yeah, the stock market, you would never know that if you just paid attention to the stock market, which is, you know, you got to pay attention to at least a little bit to the news, but I try to do it as little as possible and just kind of get whatever the important information is out of it. And if you look at the data, I mean, the data is great. Consumer confidence is back up. Home buying is, like, at – pre-2008 levels. It's amazing. Um, so uh, just looking at the economy, it's great. The market, a lot of stocks are making uh, new 52-week highs and actually new all-time highs. Companies are coming out early saying that they are expecting to make higher than expected earnings in the third quarter already. Um, this happens sometimes, but it's happening like already. And it's the, the end of the third quarter was literally yesterday. And I've already seen several companies do this. Um, and their stocks are, you know, just spiking, absolutely making new all-time highs. So the, the picture in the market right now is people are still willing to buy what's deemed as, you know, risky, you know, really speculative companies. But the companies that are America 2.0 that are based on the new technologies that everybody is using, uh, seeing mass adoption, and it's overall looking really, really great for our kinds of stocks. And you know, Ian, ST Microelectronics, which was the very first pick in Profits Unlimited all the way back to June of 2016, came out today. We continue to hold it in the portfolio. We're up by 400%. And we said we put it in the portfolio. We believe that based on the mega trends, which in 2016 was a really out of consensus call. I mean, the mood was so grim back then right. as to what was going to unfold. People were expecting the next Great Depression. And it was a very out of consensus call. And many people, called me crazy in for putting ST yeah. microelectronics into the portfolio but I was incredibly bullish phenomenally optimistic about what was going to unfold for the semi industry ST microelectronics and then you know we had a number of additional superstar picks in there AMD uh, it was also up multiple hundred percent and that world is unfolded the way that we laid out and continues to unfold and ST microelectronics is pointing actually to something that we have seen and we have already benefited by owning Tesla where in the profits unlimited portfolio we're up, I don't know, 600, 700%. Uh, we no longer count in the triple digits. We're now in the multiple triple digits for many of our stocks of, right. that, that have been in for, for some period of time. But uh, ST Microtronics is telling us that um, like the, the movement now is also into autos, which we're also seeing in the stock market in terms of like the huge number of EV plays, autonomy plays, LIDAR, sort of, you know, electronic components that would go into autonomy. And then it, it's like transferring itself as well to um, uh, all of the various components that form new energy, everything from solar stocks to inverter stocks. And then there's, you know, there's, there's sort of like microgrid stocks. There, there's an entire universe that's getting bit up. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, STM is a really good way to kind of gauge that whole whole dynamic of all these new technologies because they make the chips that get put into everything. So when they see demand go up and, you know, after a global economic lockdown, you can bet that the demand is going to be skyrocketing because there was a shortage. There, There's going to be that, you know, the message from them is very positive that these, these, uh, these industries are still accelerating at a really rapid rate. 
Right. And, and, and the forecast, by the way, was for semi uh, sales to be down something like six, 12%. We, we have never believed that. We thought that that forecast was wrong the entire year through, even at the heart of the panic, uh, we felt that the economy had incredible underlying strength driven primarily by what we were seeing by following industry newsletters, uh, some amount of what companies were saying, housing continued to be strong uh, through really the, even the heart of March, which is that people were still doing virtual seeings. There was never a moment where people really stopped looking at houses. Yeah, exactly. And you can see other, you know, big purchases too being done online, like Wayfair, the, the business really slow, or, uh, sped up for them when it was down. Obviously, a bunch of retail stores were closed. Um, so Wayfair got a ton of new business from that. And that business is going to stick. Carvana is another one where people buy, you know, cars are not cheap, but people are still buying them. And I think uh, used cars were the sales were down like 45% globally, but Carvana actually saw an increase in their sales, which is incredible. Um, so these kinds of, you know, areas like e-commerce and the fact that people are spending on big ticket things like that is a very good sign. And um, this is part of what we, we just had. We have usually have our investment calls on Thursday and uh, we get a lot of material for the Incast from our discussions there. And so we were, we were talking in how, uh, on, from, from sort of like 2016 on, uh, it was a little bit of like the Fang show for a while, yeah. which was Facebook, Amazon, Apple came into it, Netflix, Google, um, uh, and, and, and Microsoft in there as well. Um, and, and that sort of carried like the big indices, the S&P 500, the Dow, the NASDAQ 100. And now we really have, we are seeing the beginnings of a much, much more, um, what's the right word, a diverse market or a spread out market. Right. Yeah. So a, a ton of different industries are seeing demand. It's not just like that tiny group of five or six stocks. There's, you know, cloud stocks are making all time highs and a bunch of these have just gone public over the past couple of years. So it's very new. And the people who are buying it are, you know, really excited about technology and they're not going to stop investing in what finally came public after all these years, because these, these cloud software companies, there were not a lot of them a couple of years ago. And then there was just a wave coming public. Um, of course, e-commerce stocks have gone, you know, through the roof too. That's another whole uh, sector where a lot of these stocks are making all time highs. So that's just two examples. Of course, semiconductors, which are the heart of pretty much every electronic now. Um, so it's a, yeah, like you said, it's a really diverse group of stocks and a lot of stocks are leading this charge, which is why the equal weighted S and P 500, um, is going to do better because it's not weighed down by like four or five stocks. Yeah. And, and, um, so, I mean, uh, some of the semis have gone up. However, it's been a very volatile trade. Um, uh, new energy um, right, yeah. has been a really last couple of years, I'd say maybe 18 months. Uh, uh, it's also been a volatile trade. And uh, that is now really beginning to take off in a big way. And then biotech, which is really uh, as much about genetics and molecular diagnostics, is now becoming, especially if you're tracking small cap stocks, mid cap stocks, you are seeing these things. We'll be hearing about them as being big superstar stocks yeah. two years out. These, these will be like, people's like, whoa, where did these companies come from? We're not going to mention them because they are in our small cap service, Extreme Fortunes. They're in our mid cap service. It's called True Momentum. We did put uh, one um, uh, molecular diagnostic company into the Profits Unlimited portfolio. We, flash, we sent a flash trade out to our readers, uh, I believe it was like a week ago. And uh, we also put uh, a biotech company in. We, we, we're, we can't give the names out uh, anytime soon because obviously people pay us for this. And um, if you're interested in subscribing to Profits Unlimited, there'll be a link below, check into that. Um, and I'll send you to a presentation on America 2.0, which is our differentiating sort of filter for stocks that are participating in the fourth industrial revolution, America 2.0, the digitization of really our country, society, economy, everything that the, the crisis really, the pandemic has really accelerated in a big way. And the, the big takeaway really is that so many people, Ian, are expecting um, 
the they they well th- the market uh, which you know is the yeah. S&P 500 to be more volatile however if you're tracking like us and we've been talking about the the equal weighted versus the S&P 500 we actually expect the opposite because there's more participation right yeah exactly and that's that's where all of like the high growth stocks actually get a fair shake whereas in the S&P portfolio they don't make a difference or the, the market weighted portfolio, which is the main S&P 500. But yeah, so today, for example, the S&P 500 uh, market cap weighted was up like half a percent, but you see all these cloud stocks up like five plus percent and all these other like online retail solar stocks. I mean, they were some of them were up like double digits today. And even the NASDAQ was only up like a little over 1%. So it's not really a representation of these companies um, as, as well as an equal weighted index would be. So there's an old saying, Ian, that there's the stock market and then there's the market of stocks. Right. And, yeah. uh, at the, the, you know, at, in, in every point, in every period of time, there's a moment when the indices get filled with stale stocks. Um, and yes, Apple is a stale stock in our judgment. People can disagree. Uh, we don't, we don't need any more hate. We've gotten plenty of it. Um, uh, and Microsofts of the world are stale. And then there are a whole series of other companies that still dominate the S&P 500 cap weighted index. And just to give a quick explanation, cap weighted means that if you're a very large company, you have the biggest weight in the index. And equal weighted means that every single company has the same amount of influence on the index. So obviously, if you're very small and you have an equal weight to Apple, now if you're stock goes up 20%, it really can lift the equal weighted index. However, it goes up 20%, it has zero impact on the cap weighted index, which is very dominated by Apple, Microsoft, obviously Google, Amazon, Facebook, all of these very ultra large companies. And uh, Tesla is not in the S&P 500, it is in the NASDAQ. Uh, and we, as, as Ian says, uh, there's a gigantic difference that is just only going to get bigger and bigger by the day. Exactly. Yeah, and it's today, like days like today where we can see it, where there's such a huge divergence in between what we refer to as like the old stocks versus the new stocks, America 2.0. Right, and it's sort of like there's been one layer of stocks, really what people call tech, but we would call mega cap tech that has really pulled the indices, the S&P 500 cap weighted up and um, the NASDAQ, which is also cap weighted up, NASDAQ 100, and what we are seeing is now additional large participants, especially on the small to mid-size, from new energy, from uh, molecular diagnostics, biotechnology, and then we also, and then housing, which is, uh, there's too few companies to make a huge impact directly. Yeah, absolutely. And like we've said before, all that money that's coming out of the big ones like Apple, I mean, at one point it was over a trillion dollars that it sold out of the big four, meaning Apple, Amazon, Google, and uh, Microsoft, a trillion dollars being like put into cash. So where is that gonna go? Even if like 5% of it goes into America 2.0 stocks, these companies are so small relative to those bigger ones that that money could really make a, a huge jump up in those stocks. And Ian, our readers who are in many of these sector stocks already are already killing it. And these numbers are pretty amazing. Um, Profits Unlimited, the equal weighted portfolio, and we generally tell our readers to follow an equal weighted uh, way of allocating money across the stocks. So Profits Unlimited has something like under 40 stocks in it, and this is up 31.4% as of Friday, Ian, 31%, uh, the equal weighted Profits Unlimited portfolio. Our mid cap is up nearly 37% year to date. And listen to this, so the small caps, which is Extreme Fortunes, uh, is up 64%. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 64%. So it really goes to make the point that we, we're, we're talking about, which is that if you're in the big caps, that outperformance is just going to continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Yep. Yeah, yeah exactly. And like even, even the Provis Unlimited stocks, like the ones in there, I mean, they're not, they're like a, it's a small fraction of what like Apple and Microsoft are worth. It's like, a trillion dollars versus like, I don't know, 20 billion or something like that. They're not huge. There's still so much room to grow. 
Right. I mean, we do have a market where, you know, there's these mega cap stocks and then there are a lot of stocks and all the innovation, all the growth, really all the best um, technology is largely sitting uh, in now the much smaller companies that are truly innovating and also innovating at a pace. I'll say Tesla is an exception um, uh, to that. Um, but it really, even until quite recently, Tesla was what? A $60 billion company. Yeah. Yeah. Not long ago. <laughs> Not long ago. Exactly. Um, and then you put up something before we got on. Uh, let's just find, um, let's put this article up. Uh, in and it's talking about Tesla stores in China just being overwhelmed uh, after they cut the price of the Model 3 in China, and right. um, <laughs> I'm just looking at a at a picture of the of, of 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 Tesla in China, and the truth is, Ian, this is true even in the United States. Yeah, I know. Like it's it's crazy how comparable now a Tesla is to like a regular car. Um, it's I mean it's really competitive, and I think. They were like the highest selling car. They outsold all the all the gas powered cars in their class last year with the Model Three. Um, so I mean, the demand for these cars is only going to go up, and and they're tripling the their mass production here with uh, the Model Y and the Cybertruck. So it's really going to be pretty amazing. I don't I don't think they're going to have any issue selling more and more cars going forward. Yeah, and and before I came on, I went and checked. So there is a uh, crowdsourced worksheet. Uh, that's out there of the number of um, Cybertruck orders. So if you've ordered a uh, Cybertruck and put down your $100 deposit, you can voluntarily go and put your order number in. And this is now in excess of a million orders. Yeah. It's well over a million orders, which let's say at a price point of whatever you want to pick, you could pick 40,000, you could pick 60,000. Nonetheless, it represents a backlog of 35, 40 billion, 50 billion dollars. I have never seen a company ever really in my entire career have a backlog. And that's not counting, you know, and you saw as well that Walmart displaced a huge order for, for Tesla semis. Yeah. Uh, yep. so that's extra. That's a, so the backlog for, for Tesla must be nearing a hundred billion dollars yeah. yeah i'm sure even with the model y's i mean they haven't really started to really jump up production up with those yet but i mean that's only going to grow exponentially from here and yeah it's funny because tesla's i mean for a long time electric electric cars weren't popular tesla has never really had like a, tra a traditional advertisement for their products i know elon musk like he puts on big shows and everything but Despite all the marketing efforts by other companies to really make EVs a thing, it's never worked. And Tesla got it to work. And now, you know, people can't stop buying their products. Right. Uh, there, there is definitely uh, something to the Tesla brand. Tesla, in our judgment, has really replaced uh, replacing Apple. I think Apple replaced Coca-Cola in a way. And I believe Tesla is on the verge of replacing Apple as being the quintessential American brand. It represents yep. America, represents innovation, represents the future, it's cool, uh, and, and all of those things. Uh, and also, they're just selling cars by the boatloads, and soon it will be pickup trucks by the boatloads, and then it will be semi-trucks. By... And then there's the energy business, which really, that uh, I, I remember passing on uh, this video to you by actually an excellent channel that we would recommend uh, to all of you, Kaz Gaines Academy. There's just great work on Tesla. And uh, he did this one on the Mega Pack. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, it sounds familiar. I'm not sure if I read the same thing, but I have heard of the Mega Pack. So yeah, and you know, which is a solution to, you know, it's utility scale batteries, which is implemented in Australia. And so that's like really, not yet really considered in terms of people's understanding of how far ahead Tesla is in so many aspects of the businesses in which they're in, which is that the mobility business, the car business is a small piece, which has several elements to it. It's got the robo taxi part, which is still very much ahead. There's the energy part. Then there's the integration between solar, your battery pack, your car, autonomy, I mean, while, you know, Tesla stock has gone up a great deal and usually there's always some amount of selling that could keep it in a band for a while, longer term, Ian, BOP on Tesla. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, even before the Model 3 was really a big thing with mass production and everything, 
that Tesla had the biggest battery system in the world in Australia. I mean, they've really, they've been one of the biggest battery companies in the world for a while now. Um, and, you know, they're just scaling so much so fast with their cars and also their roofs um, with their home battery packs. And like you said, the mega pack, the utility um, for, you know, bigger, uh, bigger scale projects. It's, I mean, they've got all of it covered. All right, Ian, let's switch over to Bitcoin. Now, I sent you this chart about the percent of Bitcoin supply held for almost one year. Yeah. And look at that chart. I mean, it, it, it bottoms out in 2018, which is approximately the bottom for Bitcoin. Yeah. Now, that thing's just rocketing higher. In other words, you look at that red line moving up and it's now over 60% at the peak in 2017. While the peak in this, in terms of this chart, it was actually in mid 2016. There's got to be a massive scarcity that is developing in Bitcoin. And we have been chatting about this in Slack for some time now. Yeah. I mean, the, the amount of Bitcoin on exchanges peaked in February and with the halving, it just drove that scarcity even faster. Um, so since then, even from some of the biggest exchanges in the world, I mean, Bitcoin has just been pouring out of it. I think uh, the amount of Bitcoin held by exchanges is down like 400,000, uh, which is a lot of money uh, that people are just taking out of exchanges and holding. Um, and, and you can see that with this chart, too, because uh, the amount that's, at, uh, that's been untouched for a year is over 60 percent. That's really incredible. And at some point, it will have a huge effect on the price of Bitcoin. It's really just a matter of time. Yeah, I agree. And Ian to, to sent me a message recently. You know, Bitcoin feels a, a lot like uh, what Tesla felt like right before it rocketed up. And I agree. And it really yeah. does feel like like there is like a compressed, like a coil spring sitting there that is just ready to take off uh, with the first sign of some big demand. I have. We have never an exact idea what it's going to be. However, it does feel very much like it's being compressed and that yep. is just going to rock it up. Yeah, and even some of the smaller, uh, what's called altcoins are up. You know, some of them are up like 40, 50% in the past week, which is a great sign because those, um, they had they crashed recently. They were down like 50 to 70%, but they're starting to come back up, which is a very good sign for Bitcoin. Um, it shows that, you know, people are still buying these smaller, way more speculative projects. Uh, so money is still flowing into crypto. And so, yeah, it's like I said, it's only a matter of time. And it's been uh, it's been flat for a while, but the, it can't last like this forever. A hundred percent. And then that chart is telling you, I mean, the percent of supply held, you could do this for one year, three year, five year. And I yeah. would venture that it's still a straight line. It's probably not quite as much as. Uh, as, as steep as this, but nonetheless, it's a straight line. Yeah. Uh, and just to remind everybody, our view is that because of this, what we believe is a very extreme demand supply imbalance that is developing, is already here, uh, you're going to see some rocket up days uh, somewhere in the near future. And we know we're running out of time. However, our view is that Bitcoin has a good shot of hitting 50,000 this year. And longer term, we believe that Bitcoin, the up, upper end targets are in the sort of $250,000 range. And we have good company on this uh, from Tim Draper, who's really Mr. Bitcoin as far as I'm concerned. Mr. Yeah. Crypto, really. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that guy's awesome. Yeah, he, he's, yeah, he's huge into crypto. He's put pretty much all of his money into crypto at this point. He's a billionaire. So that's kind of saying something. He's a, he's a real smart guy. He's had a lot of success with investing. He's someone that I definitely uh, put some weight on whatever he says. All right, and uh, so we are bullish, optimistic, positive. We never said it before, however, on America 2.0 stocks, uh, which are very much innovation, technology growth, opportunity-based stocks, um, on Tesla, on Bitcoin, and crypto in general. And generally in this, we usually do cannabis. And I, I want to say, Ian, that it was interesting that I believe was a couple of days ago, when some of the market was down to see canopy growth really getting a bid in the market. And it did indicate that there's people coming and starting to really spec out cannabis. Yeah, and it's been kind of happening like this for a while. Uh, it has taken a while to kind of get big amounts of buying in to drive the prices up. But like Bitcoin, it's, it's really only a matter of time. Um, and when the money does flow into these pot stocks again, it's gonna be 
pretty huge because I mean, they're still growing. A lot of these companies are still growing like 50% year over year. And that kind of growth is being, uh, for the most part, ignored by the market right now. Um, I don't see it lasting too much longer at all. Uh, I expected it to um, to rebound this year and make big gains. It hasn't happened yet, but I'm still super optimistic on pot stocks in general. Right. I mean, the general nature is that when you have stocks doing this, and we acknowledge that you know our timing on these stocks has been wrong. Nonetheless, what it does drive is conviction buying, which absorbs low cost float, low cost stock that's out there. And once that's all sucked in, anybody that comes in to buy must bid up because the people who are buying, they're willing to endure through volatility. And only somebody that really has conviction about these companies, this business, this, this opportunity is going to sit through this kind of volatility. Yeah. And actually something to add would be that a few of the stocks that are based in the U.S. actually have made all time highs this year. So we're seeing that momentum really start to drive up in the ones that do business in the U.S. Um, and globally, it's still, you know, exponential growth um, of these companies. So those are going to pick up. Uh, we've seen people interested in, in a few of these, bidding them up to all time highs. And yeah, it's only a matter of time. All right, Ian, we've done the usual roundup. Any additional comments on anything? Stocks, Bitcoin, Tesla, cannabis, our usual roundup. I Nothing for me, no. All right, well, we're going to bring this Ian cast to an end. You say goodbye. Oh, let me just ask that people subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up and hey, you can comment on anything you want. Okay, now's your chance to say goodbye, Ian. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we will see you next week. Till then, have a great weekend. As Paul saying, bye.